Howdy folks! Welcome back to the Steampunk Death Row channel. Now, a while ago I mentioned the fact that I haven't talked about Steampunk for some time on this channel. And I have to remedy that right now. One of the things I've done a lot is top 10 this and top 10 that, including in Steampunk. Uh, top 10 novels, graphic novels and cartoons, anime, and so on. And so I thought, well, the obvious one now is top 10 short stories. But the problem was deciding. There were so many, and it's been over such a long period of time, that I just had to think about it a little bit more. So this time, I'm going to do top 10 story collections. This is independent of the stories themselves, but the best collections for steampunks and aspiring steampunks to acquire and read. So as I said, uh, this one is about steampunk story collections. And judging a collection is different than judging the stories themselves. Some of my favorite stories, which I will do next time, are not in any of these collections. It's often because collections have an uneven quality sometimes. They will have a really good story or two and a really bad story or two. And the good thing about a collection is if it hangs together in some way, at least there's a consistent threshold for goodness of the stories in there, even if you don't necessarily like them all. One common thing is a theme, in that you have a particular specialization. You know, you might talk about steampunk war stories, for example. The other is variety. In other words, the sampling, uh, the uh, survey, more or less, where you look for all the different kinds of steampunk you can, like you might have, you know, from the Islamic world or Asia or South America or someplace like that. So both of those kind of ideas are what make a collection good and worth reading. Of course, you want them to be steampunk in this situation, although the definition of steampunk is kind of loose. In the very good steampunk channel, Radio Retro Future, the proprietor, Bonsai Bocco, has a definition of steampunk. Uh, and he includes, you know, steampunk culture, steampunk art, and so on, and cosplay. I just concentrate on fiction. And so mine is pretty loosey-goosey. I talk about, you know, the Victorian era, science fiction takes place then, or can be societies that are Victorian-like, or it can be fantasy worlds that are like that. So some of these will be not quite steampunk, but I thought they were of such interest to steampunks that they really belonged on it anyway. Another thing we have to remember is that even steampunk is sometimes called by different names. Sometimes it's called gas lamp fantasy. People kind of prefer that that label, which is kind of understandable. The, the punk thing is, is a little weird, I will admit. So without further ado, we're going to go through my top ten list of Steampunk Story Collection, starting with number 10. Steampunk Prime, published in 2010, editor Mike Ashley. Now, this is something that Bonsart over at Radio Retro Future would say is not steampunk, because it's Victorian sci-fi. And in most cases, I'd agree with him. It's, it's a cool thing, but it's not exactly the same. This was an era when people were writing things they really thought were going to happen in the future. We're sort of extrapolating. We're kind of thinking, well, this is what they would have written, or maybe we're, we're thinking about this might have happened if aliens had invaded, etc., etc. But what I liked about this collection, and there are, are several of these that especially came out around 2010, but this is my favorite because these are lesser-known Victorian authors, uh, including one, at least one female author, which proves that, yes, they could write sci-fi in those days. And it's a nice sampling. There's uh, some fantastic adventures, like traveling through the core of the Earth, <laughs> and uh, uh, fantastic engineering projects, like building a Gibraltar tunnel. And uh, there's an alien invasion. There's a utopia description, which is a little slow, but still interesting from the point of view of the, the time, the, the era. And then there's an apocalypse. Because these aren't well-known authors, it, it almost breathes like steampunk of nowadays. 
because you wouldn't have encountered these before. It's hard to find this one, sadly. I got it on Amazon. I couldn't find it on Amazon. I hope you can find it. I really do. Number nine, Straight out of Tombstone, 2017, editor David Boop. I wonder if he's related to Betty. This is another one that's going to be controversial because it's technically a collection of weird western stories. But weird western and steampunk really intersect a lot because it, it's the same era and there's a lot of the same corruption of history like the supernatural, uh, like maybe aliens or time travel or other types of things that changes it and makes it more fun. I included it because I love this collection, first of all, and also because it's more interesting than a lot of the tropish steampunk that basically inserts gears and mad scientists and zeppelins into a normal story and calls it steampunk. These are by some pretty great authors, some favorite authors of mine, and several of them are well known as steampunk writers, including David Lee Summers, who, uh, who's a fellow Southwesterners who I've met at various cons, nice guy. Uh, another is Kevin J. Anderson, who's done some great steampunk, and Phil Foglio of, of uh, Girl Genius fame. Pretty good stuff. What can I say? I, I very much suggest, suggest you check it out. Number eight, The Immersion Book of Steampunk, published 2011, edited by Gareth D. Jones and Carmelo Rafala. And I could only find this one on paper, and I'm not sure it's even in print, so you might have trouble finding this one too, which is unfortunate. This is one of those series, immersion books, that would they would do different types of genres and collect stories or whatnot for people, fans of various things. This book itself is weirdly printed. The, the odd and even numbered pages are wrong. <laughs> you expect them be one on the right or the left, and it's jarring, but nonetheless, there's some very good ones by noted writers like Paul D. Filippo. He appears in a lot of these, writes a lot of steampunk short stories, and Tanif Lee. We have had things like Outlaw Automatons, uh, Moving Churches, uh, Traveling Through Dimensions, and Walt Whitman, one of these historical characters who often gets written into steampunk stories. Number seven, Clockwork Fairy Tales, uh, published 2013 by Stephen L. Anzac, perhaps it's Anchak, not sure, and James C. Bassett. Now, are there a lot of steampunk fairy tale books out there? This is the best that I've encountered so far. Not that the others aren't worth reading, but I think it's got the most notable authors and the best adaptations. It's not something I'm reading a lot. I prefer original stories, but I've done it myself, <laughs> adapting folk tales. Uh, again, Hunter's Wager, which I'm going to publish sometime later this year, is one of those. And I like the stories especially by K.W. Jeter and Paul D. Filippo. <laughs> and once again, Jeter does Hans Christian Andersen's Red Shoes and a very, very good adaptation of that. Number six, The Mammoth Book of Steampunk, published 2012, edited by Sean Wallace. Again, here's another of these series type books. Publisher says, I'm going to publish cozy mysteries or, you know, noir detective stories. They're all these theme books. I'm going to collect these stories, but I looked at a list. It's got the most ridiculous things in there, like Egyptian whodunits. Who writes Egyptian whodunits? I'm going to have to read some of those because I am totally fascinated by that idea. Nonetheless, this one's great because it's got 30 stories in there, and because it has so many stories, some of my favorites are in here, even though it can be a little uneven at times. The preface is by Ekaterina Cedia. I've talked about her before. She's Russian-born steampunk writer, and it's one of these kind of apologetic prefaces, which bugs me, you know, talking about, you know, the oppression of women or whatnot in the Victorian society. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's happened with a lot of historical eras. Uh, nonetheless, there's a lot of uh, fairly notable authors in here. Uh, Jeff Vandermeer, who's, him and his wife have done a lot of steampunk collections. Jay Lake, who's written some good stuff. Shari Priest of Bone Shaker fame. And N.K. Jemison, uh, the um, Hugo-winning black female writer who has a story in here, not my favorite, 
But it's interesting to see what she'd written. And several writers I haven't even uh, heard of. Number five, After Punk. Steam Hard Tales of the Afterlife, 2018. Ed editors Danielle, Ac Danielle Ackley McPhail, another awesome name, and Greg Schauer, or Schoyer, whichever. And this is cool. There's horror and supernatural mixed with steampunk. It's a perfect combination. My favorite of all is A Feast for Horses, which is dealing with Haitian voodoo and, and uh, a battle between a witch and a voodoo deity. So, for whatever reason, steampunk and voodoo, they just seem to go together. All these fetishes, you know, that they will wear, the feathers and the bones and so on, that voodoo priests have, it's kind of like our gears and goggles and so on that we adorn ourselves with. And there's a number of other great stories, but I've gone on too long about that already. Number four, Clockwork Chaos. And Danielle Ackley McPhail is an editor of this one, too. She's doing something right, apparently. Also, Neil Levin. And this was 2013 from Dark Quest Books. I think the idea of chaos is, means they're action-adventure stories, and they are great. This is some of my favorite stories. Like the other one, a lot of these authors are people I don't recognize, but I still love the stories, and it's fairly consistently good. It begins with Ambergris on Ice by Jeff Young, which is one of these alternate history exploration adventures, which it was quite good. There's a, like an anti-war story called King and Country, by Richard Marston. One of my favorite titles, I forget the author at the moment, but the story was called Bell, Cog, and Scandal. <laughs> That's a great one. Number three, I've talked about this one before, Steam Funk. Uh, 2013, editors Milton Davis and Balogun Ojitade. I encountered this by stumbling across Ojitade's website. And he was complaining about steampunk being too white and how... Uh, we didn't deal with issues like slavery and Jim Crow and etc., etc., etc. Now, my response to people who say that is, write your own! And he did! So he assembled this collection of black writers and to write his Steam Funk. I love that title, too. It's kind of Afrofuturism in some ways. In some ways, it's af Afro Afrohistoricalism. But it's much better than I expected. You kind of think, well, we're just going to throw these writers together because they're all the same ethnicity. No, they're all really good. And one of my favorite writers is in here, uh, P. Jelly Clark. Uh, that's spelled D-J-E-L-I, not like jam. Uh, and uh, he's written some really great stuff. And he has a story in here. There's The Lion Hunter by Josh Reynolds. This is one of my all-time favorite stories about the Maasai warriors and their, how technology has changed their coming of age. I think he's hunting like a mechanical lion, something like that. And The Delivery by Milton Davis, which is a alt history, which includes a black separatist nation in between the Union and the Confederacy called Fredonia with George Washington Carver as president. He's a guy who shows up in a lot of black written steampunk, just like Tesla shows up so much. Number two, steampunk. That's just the name, Steampunk. Published 2008, right at the beginning of the boom, by Anne and Jeff Vandermeer. Now, they are big wigs in Steampunk. They do a preface, which is another one of these apologetic things that really irritates me because they're talking about how bad the Victorian era was and how the new wave of Steampunk writers, people like me, <laughs> want to celebrate the Victorian era, and they, we shouldn't. We really shouldn't because it was bad. Well, every era had its good and bad. So, putting that aside, this has some of the most notable steampunk authors, uh, including people like Michael Moorcock, uh, James Blaylock, Jay Lake, Joe Lansdale, uh, Paul D. Filippo again, Neil Stevenson, who does both steampunk and cyberpunk, and Michael Chabon, who's done some great alternate history. It's interesting to note that one of my very favorite is by Ted Chang, another up-and-coming, very imaginative writer. I think the movie's Arrival. That was based on one of his stories. In this one, it's like 72 letters, or is it 72 characters, 
but it's about alchemy and it's a very disturbing view of human reproduction. <laughs> very creepy, but well worth reading and very well imagined. And it's also interesting that Lansdale's story, I absolutely hate it. <laughs> it's like very crude and very violent, over the line in my view, despite the fact that his book Zeppelin's West is one of my very favorite steampunk books, which I will talk about sometime in the future. So definitely read this if, you, if you're interested at all in an introduction to steampunk. This is one of the ones you want to read. But it's not my number one. Number one, Queen Victoria's Book of Spells. 2013, Ellen Datlow and Terry Windling. Now, at our local used bookstore, Bookman's, there was a display of steampunk books that they had nice up on their shelf. Well, guess who ruined it by buying them all? <laughs> Yours truly! <laughs> and this was one of the books in it. And... I was a little bit reticent about it because I thought, this sounds kind of feminist. It sounds like something that, you know, Je the Vandermeers might put together, like critiquing uh, the Victorian era and how evil it was. And it wasn't that at all. I mean, it had female editors. It had a lot of female writers, but not exclusively. And it wasn't exclusively about women. It was basically, that's just the title story in it. And the, in the preface even was like, well, this is an interesting era, and there was all these issues, and it's kind of even-handed, which is surprisingly refreshing. And there's a lot of great stories in here. Uh, James Blaylock Smithfield is one of the best. It's about uh, photographic technology showing the past. And, and it's kind of, it's a little spooky. Uh, there's one by Veronica Shano. It's not familiar with her, but it's called Phosphorus. It's based on a historical, real historical event of a match factory in England where the women developed these horrible, horrible health problems from being exposed to white phosphorus. You know, and the company was pretty callous about it. One of the worst things from the Industrial Revolution. So it's very, it kind of makes you angry, but it's, but it's true to life. Theodore Goss had one called Estella Saves the Village, which is very much fun, about all these historical characters from the Victorian classic literature who was living in the same village and how it's endangered and this one character has to save it. I love that one. But my favorite is the title story uh, by Delia Sherman about young Victoria as a princess. They're training her magic and you know, her frustration with the restrictions of her royal life. And uh, the author has this little blurb, as a lot of them do. She talks about how the historical Victoria, you know, was kind of indifferent and kind of humorless and so on as a as a queen, as an empress, but that she was also could understand that her life was very restricted and that it must have been very frustrated with, to her as a girl and she was kind of isolated. So she's very sympathetic, but not laudatory, which is good, which is the perfect way to write about a historical character. So one of the reasons I love this collection so much the stories themselves aren't necessarily as stellar as all the others. So these are my picks. These are my 10 picks for steampunk story collections. They're not the only ones out there, so definitely read what you can. Some of these you may have trouble finding. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I have to call them as I see them. And please, 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 I don't get enough feedback in the sense of people suggesting other stuff. Occasionally people say, why don't you talk about this, or why don't you check out that? And that's what I really, really want to see. If somebody's seen a collection that I haven't seen, that they think I should read and review, I very much want to do that. Also, please like and subscribe, because that helps us get out the good steampunk word, which we really want to do. So for now, this is Steampunk Desperado saying, Adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future, and the present is extraordinary.